Hey you guys, welcome back. I'm Andy. One of the biggest news stories last week was the virtual summit between Chinese President Xi Jinping and US President Joe Biden. In his address, President Xi made mention of China's democracy, which left many people scratching their heads. Does China really have democracy? Let's find out. Last week, Chinese President Xi Jinping and US President Joe Biden met up for their first meeting since Biden took office earlier this year. The virtual discussion between the leaders of the world's two largest economies was designed as a way to ease tensions between the superpowers and get relations back on track after they were hugely derailed under President Trump. Most of the content of the summit has already been analysed at length, so I won't address the details here, but I do want to dive deeper into one comment President Xi made about democracy in China. He told President Biden, Democracy is not mass-produced with a uniform model or configuration for countries around the world. Whether a country is democratic or not should be left to its own people to decide. Dismissing forms of democracy that are different from one's own is in itself undemocratic. Basically, what President Xi is saying here is that China has its own form of democracy, that democracy comes in all shapes and sizes, and that other countries, in this case the United States, should respect that and stop claiming that only their form of democracy is right or correct. But this raised some huge questions for many. Does China really have democracy? Chinese people can't vote for their president, so how can they claim to have democracy? Well, today I'll try to explain, in simple terms, China's style of democracy and how it works. First, we need to look at what democracy is. Basically, the word comes from two Greek words, demos, which means the people, and kratos, which means power. Put together, they form the word we know today, democracy, which means people power, or rule by the people. Different governments take that to mean different things, but it's fair to say that for many Westerners, it means one thing and one thing only, the right to vote directly for their leader. So it goes without saying then that many Westerners will automatically reject the idea that China values democracy without diving deeper, and I think that's a big mistake. In most Western nations, including my home country New Zealand, nationwide elections take place every few years, which determine who will form the next government. If you find a political party that you like, you can give them your vote and hope that they'll represent your values when it comes to forming policy and making new laws. This is called representative democracy, because you are, in effect, giving your vote to a political party you trust will represent you when it comes to voting on new legislation in Parliament, who may or may not vote the way you like on certain issues. It's worth noting, though, that many Western democracies don't actually allow citizens to vote directly for their leader. In my home country, New Zealand, for example, votes can only be cast for the political party of choice, who will take the role of leader within the party and ultimately the leader of the country if that party wins is decided behind closed doors, outside of the public realm. And apart from voting in general elections every few years, it's literally impossible for every individual to cast a vote on every single issue that comes up in government, hence the term representative democracy. While China's democracy features aspects that are representative and aspects that are based on elections, the type of democracy practiced in China is referred to as whole process democracy or deliberative democracy. But it's probably easier if we just call it democracy with Chinese characteristics. What many people don't realize is that soon after China's reform and opening up began in 1978, the country also began democratic reforms aimed at slowly building up democratic systems based on the unique characteristics of China's history, geography, population, challenges, and so on. The key of China's style of democracy is that the people are the most important thing. That's why it's called the People's Republic of China. The currency is called the People's Money, the central bank is called the People's Bank, and so on. To keep it simple, I'll highlight the four main parts of democracy with Chinese characteristics, where Chinese people regularly exercise their democratic rights. They are people's congresses, multi-party cooperation, regional ethnic autonomy, and community-level self-governance. People's Congresses are where representatives are elected from all walks of life, all political backgrounds and all sectors, to represent their groups in the political process. These Congresses happen at many governmental levels all across the country, with the largest being the National People's Congress, or NPC, 
which consists of members of different political parties, representatives of different organisations, ethnic minorities and other groups for a term of five years. Here, the deputies take part in political consultation, democratic supervision, as well as the administration of state affairs. Some quick stats for you. Since 2016, 2.5 million people of different groups and minorities from all walks of life have been elected to represent those groups in People's Congresses. They were voted in by more than 1 billion registered voters. On top of that, over 3 million public submissions have been made since the 18th National Congress in 2012. Many people don't realise that there are currently a total of nine political parties in China, eight of whom are not affiliated with the ruling Communist Party of China, but work alongside them in governmental affairs. Many members of the other eight political parties hold important posts, such as vice chair positions of the National People's Congress. Regional ethnic autonomy is another important part of democracy with Chinese characteristics, which basically means that in parts of China with large concentrations of ethnic minorities, such as Xinjiang, self-governance is practiced under the guidance of the state. This allows for them to exercise autonomous power and take care of their own affairs. China has five autonomous regions that offer regional ethnic autonomy, those being Xinjiang, Tibet, Inner Mongolia, Guangxi and Ningxia. Finally, community-level self-governance is where China employs most of its public electoral systems at the grassroots level. That means that millions of urban and rural citizens can directly vote for the representatives who govern their daily lives, allowing them to help make decisions, discuss politics, and engage in democratic supervision, which allows the most fundamental level of Chinese society to best reflect the needs and desires of the people. Voting that takes place in village and community elections all across China enjoys up to and over 90% turnout, which is much higher than most Western democracies. So to sum up, there really is no right or wrong way to engage in democracy, as long as it's designed by and for the people it serves, based on the unique conditions those people face. China's form of democracy today is based on ongoing changes and tweaking since the 1980s, and it will continue to evolve at a speed that's right for China. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, Mo zhi shi tou guo he, and basically translates as, cross a river by feeling the stones. This is a great way to describe China's approach to democratization as it continues to expand and grow. So what do you think of democracy with Chinese characteristics? And how important do you think it is that we respect difference in today's global world?